Now at 10 o'clock, lawmakers in the Senate passed their version of Medicaid expansion, but not everyone is on the same page. We'll explain. Plus, the city of Hattiesburg continues to improve parks around the hub city. What projects are finished and what's still on the list coming up? And it was a beautiful day, but how long will this nice weather last? We'll tell you about that. Plus, look ahead to your Easter weekend forecast. All that and more in a few minutes, but your news at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Welcome in. We are glad you're here. I'm Michael Clark. If you don't have health insurance, new developments at the state capitol could potentially change that. Some lawmakers in both chambers of the Mississippi legislature say they're willing to expand Medicaid to some degree. The Senate's more narrow proposal was passed overwhelmingly today. Courtney Ann Jackson has the latest on that tonight. With, with a bipartisan vote count, Senate leaders still won't call it Medicaid expansion, but more people would get coverage under the plan, extending coverage to individuals making up to $15,060 a year, working at least 120 hours a month. This bill is a hand up. What you saw was Mississippi take a step forward to helping each other during what is a um, very holy week for most of us. Both Republicans and Democrats gave the bill the green light. One GOP member stating plainly he knows it's a position that differs from Tate Reeves. I've got the governor saying it's not conservative if we do this. I'm telling you from every doctor and every nurse they said, but Senator Wiggins, it's, it's the right thing to do for this particular population. While Democrats are admitting it's not what they wanted. We would love to see more individuals covered. We would love not to have hurdles or any restrictions on additional access to health care coverage. But we did not want to lose an opportunity to keep this vehicle alive as we work through this process. Democrats have repeated their opposition to the work requirement, saying the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services under the Biden administration hasn't approved any state plans that include them. Even Republican Senator Joey Fillingain commented on the proposal's fate. They're not going to make an exception for Mississippi. Therefore, this work requirement is not going to be accepted, meaning this bill is going nowhere. House Minority Leader Representative Robert Johnson says leaving the work requirement not only sets it up for failure, it's unnecessary. We're playing political football again with people's health care. Uh, but I will remind people again, the people we're trying to cover, 99% of them are already working, and that's all, those are the only people you're going to cover. Courtney Ann Jackson. All right, well, I enjoyed the weather so much out there today. Patrick, can we do it again tomorrow? Uh, let's see. Yes, yes, we can. All right, so it's just that easy. Uh, but yeah, uh, the weather was perfect out there today. We made it up into the 70s. It was beautiful, crystal clear skies. It was an amazing day here across the region. And right now we're seeing some quiet weather. As you can see, we're cooling down pretty quickly. We're already down to 51 degrees out of the campus of USM tonight. We're looking at the intersection of, of Highway 49 and Hardy Street. There is Forest General in the background with the radio tower on top of it flashing away tonight. It's a quiet night across the city of Hattiesburg and temperatures are into the 40s for most now. 49 in Purvis, 46 in Columbia and Foxworth, 49 in Collins and so so you're sitting at 48 degrees. Now, when you wake up tomorrow morning, the kiddos will need a jacket. We're going to continue to cool down all the way down to 41 degrees, but the afternoon sunny and beautiful. We'll take a full look at that good Friday forecast as well as your Easter weekend coming up in a few minutes. All right, Patrick, thanks. We'll check back with you soon. Curbing crime in Mississippi's capital. That's the goal for Operation Unified. So today, agencies shared an update on the progress being made to create a safer Jackson. More than 600 arrests have been reported since that operation began. Investigators say they've seized more than 200 weapons, $30,000, and 500 pounds of drugs. Some of the drugs recovered include fentanyl and ecstasy pills. Jackson's police chief says the goal here is to get drug traffickers and violent criminals off Jackson streets. Our citizens in the city of Jackson deserve a better quality of life. I'm committed, dedicated, and laser focused to give them a better quality of life. And I think what we're seeing uh, is a downward trend in violent crimes in the city of Jackson. And that's where we want to be, and that was the focus of this operation. And I assure you, as the chief prosecutor of Pines County, we will prosecute everyone possible for these violent crimes, drug crimes, 
any of the foolishness that we've seen far too long in the city of Jackson, it stops. There are nearly a dozen agencies as a part of this operation. 28 homicides have been reported in Jackson this year. And for comparison, though, the city had 34 at this point last year. Well, tonight, Hattiesburg Parks and Recreation leaders are sharing updates on some big projects going on. Our Delaney Dukes is live in the studio tonight to break down the progress and what's ahead. Delaney. Hey, Michael, we're almost halfway through the fiscal year and the city of Hattiesburg has seen some huge improvements to its parks. While some of these parks are seeing more lighting going up or a new coat of paint, others are going through a complete transformation. The hub city is packed full of green spaces throughout the town and Mayor Toby Barker says it's important to keep them looking their best. Parks are a huge part of any city's quality of life and Hattiesburg is blessed to have a lot of green spaces, a lot of park areas. However, what we've noticed over the course of many years is that you really have to keep investing in those parks. And that's exactly what city leaders have been doing. Now that we're about halfway through the fiscal year, we've got some updates on what's been accomplished so far. At Knight Street Ballfield, we've done a full new fence around the facility, new paint, new scoreboards, and um, we're currently investigating drainage there. We've made improvements to the field surface and surround fencing at Eastside Park. We have made improvements to Camper Park at the tennis facility, and so those now include pickleball now and pickleball courts. We have opened JC Park. We're in construction currently for Midtown Green, which is slated to open later this summer. But those aren't the only improvements residents can be looking forward to. Just in the next six months, people can expect that lighting on Field 16 at Tatum Park soccer field will be done. Uh, we're also doing a pretty big overhaul of the pavilion itself. We are doing the Dayer Park Pavilion and Playground. Uh, we're replacing the playground at Hope Park. We're redoing the fountain at the train depot. That's just in the next six months. And, and every year we kind of step back and reevaluate where do we need to make sure that we're uh, continuing to provide upgrades, what grants are out there, who can we partner with to make those things happen. Now with all these improvements will come a lot of construction. So city leaders are asking for your patience while our parks get the renovations. All right, Delaney, thanks for the updates. Pre-K collaboratives across the Pine Belt are now accepting applications for the 2024-2025 school year. Lamar County Schools pre-K registration dates are coming up soon, April 12th through the 19th. The district will be accepting those applications for the pre-K early learning collaborative. To register your child for the Lamar County pre-K, you must live in the attendance zone that you're applying for, schedule and attend a screening appointment April 22nd through May 2nd, and your child must be four years old by September 1st. We have teachers that are fully trained to work with younger students. The teacher to child ratio is one to 10, and our kids really just get that benefit of being on the campus that they're going to attend kindergarten in. So it really is a great opportunity for them to get to learn with their peers, learn how to get along and all of those things. Lamar County school leaders say registration fills up fast and there could be a waiting list. So head over to our website for the application link and more details. Well, experiencing ocean exploration through underwater robotics. That's the goal of the University of Southern Mississippi's Blue Tech program. Today, high school students got a chance to see what a day in the water looks like for marine researchers. They learned about new technology and sampling techniques in the soft fish habitat. The project manager says it's an important program for the coast. One of the values of having that early exposure is to encourage students to seek these opportunities that are right here in Mississippi and along the Mississippi Gulf Coast and gain an understanding that they can have careers and stay in Mississippi. There will be another Blue Tech Field Day, April 18th. If you'd like to register, head to the University of Southern Mississippi's website. All right, a lot more to talk about at 10 o'clock. The Special Olympics Spring Games were held today at Jones College. We'll have the details when we come back.